Why don't you put your hands together and give him the fruit of your lips. First, give me under the God. I thank the Lord for Jesus. Thank God that I serve the one and only true living God, the God of the Bible, who sent his only son, Yeshua, the Christos, Jesus the Christ, to down the cross for my sin. I'm glad that that son sent his precious promised gift of the Holy Ghost, the pneuma, the wind, the power, the breath of God, to be my comforter and my keeper. It's an honor to be here. I also honor the chief angel of this house, my dear brother, your pastor and the bishop of the North Carolina Third Ecclesiastical District, Bishop Patrick Wooden Sr. Put your hands together. We cannot honor him without honoring the one that loves him more than anybody in the room outside of Christ. The fragrance of the jurisdiction and this house, let us honor Lady Pamela Wooden. First Assistant Elder John, Second Assistant Elder Anthony, in her absence, District Missionary Moles. Let's honor them. I'm so excited, and I'm, I'm not going to have you standing too long. Uh, initially, it was looking like my wife wasn't going to be able to come. Uh, the Lord has blessed her there at United Airlines, and uh, she's moving up through the ranks and upper level management. So I was, I was getting ready to pout, but then I thought about the benefits. <laughs> so I was acting like I wouldn't bother and said, I'll be all right. But then she called me. She said, well, we figured it out and I'm on my way. I'm so happy that my baby is here with me. I'm excited. I'm so excited. Uh, in less than 48 hours, it'll be a brand new year. Uh, look at somebody and say, God has been good to me. Uh, now the world is getting ready to pop bottles and wait on balls to drop. But I think I have at least 100 people in here. They said, Brother Cleveland, when I look back over my life this year, let me talk to this side. Brother Cleveland, when I look back over my life this year, God has been good to me. And I need to know if I got at least 100 people would have give him a God been good to me praise. My, 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 my. I'm going to hold it together. A, a little song came to me. Down through the years. Come on, put your hands together. God's been good to me. Take it up, ladies. Oh, God's been good to me. Down through the years. God's been good to me. God's really been good. Put your hands together. Everybody clap. That's it. Oh, oh. Down through the years, God's been good to me. Down through the years, let me hear you. God's been good to me. Oh, Lord, he has. God's been good to me. I'm getting ready to go one more, more time. All of my life, clap your hands. God's been good to me. Oh, oh. Well, that sounds like the saints. Everybody clap yo. I'm 
gonna move in a minute, Kevin. Come on, Kevin Wilson, let me hear you. Let me hear you, Kevin. We gotta keep moving. Everybody see God. Said, God's really been good to me. Clap your hands and give him a Come this far by faith. Be the Lord. Yes, sir. We are trusting. Trusting in His holy word. He never failed. He never failed. Me yet. Oh, I'm singing. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, turn around. We come this far. Tell the person next to you, you can't give up now. Tell them, you can't give up now because you've come too far to turn back. Clap your hands right there. Just another day that the Lord that he's kept me long. Just another day, I am that the Lord, that he's kept me. Ah, he's kept me. He's kept me from all evil. Did it kill my mind, my mind, my mind, my mind, my mind. He kept it straight on him. You ought to shake your neighbor hand and say, just another day. Oh, that's the Lord, that's the, that's the Lord, that's the Lord, that, oh, has kept me long. Let the church say yes. Come on, say yes. Hey, go. Yes. Oh, my love. Yeah. Hey, la mama. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. Clap your hands and give him glory. Let me free, let me free some of my Baptocostals in the room. Don't you let these Pentecostals make you feel some kind of way. Because, you know, my grandfather was the chairman of the deacon board of a little Baptist church in Memphis. And uh, there's, a, there's a certain praise that seems to permeate through the Baptist church that many Pentecostals don't understand. And I would get offended at my Pentecostal church when they would talk about my granddaddy in the Baptist church. Because I watched drug dealers get saved off of this praise. I watched husbands return home to their families with this praise. I watched daughters come off the street with this praise. Now some of the Baptist folk in here already know where I'm going. But when I start saying it, don't you get bound by nobody standing next to you. But if I got at least 100 folk know what I'm talking about, get with me and say, yes sir, yes sir. Somebody got saved on yes sir. Somebody got healed on yes sir. Where my yes sir people, let me hear you.
how to preach. Bow your heads all over the room. Our Father, our God, we thank you for this time called preaching. You promised to use the foolishness of it to confound the wise. Save, heal, and deliver in this place today. Say that your contracts are canceled. Say that your contracts are canceled. Say that your contracts are canceled. Every evil work you've had planned for the people of God, we hit the recent button and send it straight back to the pit of hell. Our lives are the better for being in the tabernacle today. So, Father, as we have continuously done across the country, we pray the same prayer. Let the angels that are ministering at your altar day and night remove a coal from that altar and place it on the lips and the tongue of Al Cleveland. Let us not speak just as a man, but as an oracle of your Christ and your word. Hide us behind your glorious cross. Cover us with your blood. Let no flesh glory in your sight. We ask all of these things, believing by faith, that they're done. If you affirm and agree, everybody say amen. 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 Be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm a... I'm a teacher by passion, and it blessed me to hear the bishop encourage, especially all of the leaders, to take the classes, in particular hermeneutics, the science of interpretation. On your role right now, if I were to whisper something in one person's ear, and ask you to whisper the same thing that I said all the way down your row, you will find that what I said would have been so misconstrued. And a lot of times uh, in the body of Christ, uh, we have men and women of God who have not been encouraged to go and learn how to articulate have a conversation in a conversational tone about your God. First Peter 3.15 says, but sanctify the Lord in your heart and be ready to give an answer <clears throat> concerning the faith. And then when you get into other translations, it says the hope that is within you. you go to the Amplified at this point, it'll say, uh, but do it with gentleness and respect. And many times we Pentecostals, when we cannot adequately defend our faith, we become hostile. I'm a product of the 70s, and I remember when the saints had no problem in telling you where you're going if you did not agree with them. Talk back to me. They'll tell you, man, I, don't, I can't explain all that. All I know is you're going to hell. I'm like, so now, if I was being invited to your church, I wouldn't come right there. It is so important in today's society that already looks down on Christendom as a whole, especially those of us who embrace Acts 2 with the gifts following and the tongues that they do not understand. If you cannot have an intelligent conversation, you lose them. I'm reading a book now uh, entitled Intelligence Reframed. Intelligence Reframed. David Gardner. And what piqued my interest is chapter six of the book that talks about spiritual intelligence. I have not read chapter six yet because I want to get through the first five and listen to him build his case against the IQ tests and the bell curve. If you don't know what that is, these, these are tests. These are the battery of tests that determines how intelligent you are. And then based upon these scores, 
your plight in life is pretty much written. So if this is the premise that he's fighting, I'm curious to see what will he have to say about spiritual intelligence. Uh, I know what the Bible says, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I know the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a, a skilled craftsman who needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I taught a series a couple of years ago entitled, Lord, make me spiritually savvy. That's with all of the gifts working, and I don't have to speak in tongue out in public. But that same Holy Ghost will give me utterance. And now I know some of you may think utterance is ah, ta, 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 ta. But to define the word utterance is to be able to speak in connective sentences and make sense. And this is what the Holy Ghost wants to do in this hour. He wants to use people who others would not even give credit or credence to. And the Holy Ghost of God will, check this out, recognize that you've been seeking after him and his word. And stuff will start coming out of you that you didn't even know was there. Did I lose about half the room? Understand the Holy Ghost is more than the outward expression that we experience in here. The scripture said, for he will lead and he will guide you into all truth. This is not what I'm preaching about. I'm just talking. I teach a um, <clears throat> class entitled the Al Cleveland Leadership Training Academy. Uh, we normally have about 50 to 75 students. Most are young ministers in the gospel. And I always start off explaining topical preaching versus expository preaching. Topical preaching is when you take a topic and you find scripture to support your topic. Unfortunately, in today's realm of preachers and preaching, we got preachers making the Bible say what the Bible is not saying. It's called preaching out of context. The scripture talks about death and there are scriptures on death. And then there's a passage that says, whatever you're getting ready to do, go do it quickly. So I can convince you to commit suicide by taking the Bible out of context. Then there's expository preaching that goes into the scripture and makes you argue with the text. And the older preachers taught us that. It's okay to argue with the text. Let it make you come in here, think, and get the in-depth meaning. Now, with all that explanation, here's what I'm getting ready to do right now. I'm getting ready to blend both worlds. <laughs> I'm that thinker type of a preacher. I have a topic, but I'm going to use the expository method to argue my point. With that being said, let's go to Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Hebrews, the 13th chapter. We're going to read verse 5 and then skip down to verse 8. You have it? Say amen. amen. I'm going to start reading for the sake of time. Verse 5 in chapter 13 of the letter to the Hebrews reads, Let your conversation be without covetedness, and be content with such things as ye have. 
For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The word of the Lord is blessed. For a topic for a little while this afternoon, Christ is in my future, and he can hear me over there. Christ is in my future, and he can hear me over there. To tag it with a Subtopic, I would say this, get ready, future is coming. The epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Hebrews, was written in AD 70. This is a doctrinal letter with a twofold intent. Number one, to ensure Jewish Christians by showing that Judaism had come to an end through the fulfillment of Christ, and Christ was the whole purpose of the law. Number two. The exhortation passages, uh, uh, they address the ever-present danger of Jewish believers lapsing back into Judaism and regarding Christianity as a mere phase. In your study time, I want you to read Acts, the 18th chapter through the 24th chapter, and you'll discover that even the strongest Christians in Palatine were guilty of mixing Judaism and Christianity. Here... Paul discusses the good things of Judaism and the better things of Christ. He says, Christ is better than angels. Christ is better than Moses. Christ is better than Joshua. Christ is better than Aaron. The new covenant is better than the Mosaic law. Further study will show us that Hebrews has six divisions with five of them being parenthetical. We don't have time to give all of the parenthetical scriptures, but I will just give the headings, the great salvation the rest of God, our great high priest, the new covenant, and the heavenly sanctuary, the superiority of faith or the faith way, and worship and walk of the believer. Now, as Paul gets ready to close this doctrinal letter, right before he deals with Christian separation and worship in chapter 13, verse 10 through 16, And the relationship between the believer and the priest in verse 17, he is preparing to give his apostolic benediction in verses 18 through 25. Paul drops and inserts a golden revelatory theological nugget regarding how Christ transcends the laws of time and declares in chapter 8 of Uh, uh, verse 8 in chapter 13, that Christ, Jesus Christ, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Understand that Christ here in Paul's theology was God reincarnate. So you have to be careful when when we read Jesus Christ, not to assume or have a mental position that Christ is his last name. Christ states his position as Messiah and King, one of the third reflections or characteristics of the Godhead. Scripture says, Jesus said of himself, when you see me, you have seen the Father, because I and the Father We are one. So here is God in Christ, Paul speaks of, who creates time and is not governed by the restraints of time, stands on the outskirts of time and dictates destiny. So he watches over his word to perform. So Paul is like, slow down and understand that this Christ, um, let me say it the way that the late Bishop F.D. Washington would say it, 
back in the 80s, before there was a then or a there, a when or a where, there was God. So Paul is saying this Christ that we speak of is in every dimension of what the earth calls existence. So which means if we are a divine design out of the mind of God when we go to Ephesians there in the third chapter, you need to understand that Jeremiah got a clue as to what was going on when he said, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Which means that you are a thought before you were a human. So if this God stands on the outskirts of what he created, we can't put him in the confines of our mind with time. Again, we're less than 48 hours from a brand new future. We are less than 48 hours away from a year that we have never seen before. But if I could just grapple with your mind for a couple of more minutes, would it throw you off your square if I told you that the God today is in the God tomorrow that we don't see? Would it, would it, would it throw you off if I told you that what we are waiting on, he's already there waiting on us to get to where we're going? Slow down, Cleveland. Genesis 1.14 says, and God said, let there be lights in the firmaments of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Since the beginning of time, man has tried to become one with time in its governance. In the eighth century, a French monk created the hourglass. In 1500 BC, the Egyptians created the sundial. Uh, in 1656, the pendulum clock was invented. In 1795, the US Railroad set a time system to meet and keep the trains on schedule. November the 20th, 1888, the clocks that we have today were invented by a jeweler in New York. Uh, but I like what Paul, I mean, Peter had to say concerning God, Christ, and time. He said, nevertheless, do not let this one fact escape you or escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day, is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. So I came to tell somebody today, don't let time mess you up. Don't you let nobody convince you that you've missed your time. Don't you let this season convince you that this is your destination. But I want you to tell the person real nicely sitting next to you, just you don't, don't get loud, but tell them to hold on. Come on, tell them to hold on. Your future is on the way. My first point, if it were possible to travel back in time, science has been trying to figure time travel out now for the last 50 years. If it were possible to travel back in time, your time, from the conception of your birth, would you be okay knowing that the God of the Bible was there? And would you be okay if it were possible to go back to find out that he is still as powerful as he was when you were there. You'll find out that he has never lost his power. Because again, this God 
is not governed by time. The Hebrews had a word for him, Yahweh, self-existing one. Uh, the late Dr. Matty Moss Clark wrote a song that says, just let him be. And this is who the God of the Bible is. He's just existing all around the areas that he has created for us. In your yesterday, many of you, the enemy told that you wouldn't make it. He sent sickness to your address. He sent calamity to your address. He sent hard times to your address. He let people walk away and you thought all was lost, but the God in your yesterday said, yo, you can't die now. You can't quit now because you got demons to cast out in your future. You got to lay hands on a couple of folk and they're going to get healed by your testimony. Talk back to me. You can't walk out in your yesterday. So now, here we are. We've established the fact that he is the God of our yesterdays. I uh, called the office. Well, actually, I called Elder John. I wanted to have three easels. And I was going to put yesterday, day, and forever. Got with the bishop yesterday. He said, we don't do easels. And he talked about me so bad. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm glad that the easels didn't show up. Because <laughs> that would have been a hard sell after he would have presented me and my easels. But I wanted to paint it a visual. To paint a visual to let you know that in every stage of life, God is there. And everything that you go through, God. Is there. Every tear that you shed, God is there. Every pain that you feel, God is. Oh, I can't get no help right now. When they walk away, listen, God is there. So if he did it yesterday, why can't he do it today? Let me work a little while. My first surgery 18 years ago after my aneurysm, when I look back at it now, it literally came to break me as a man. I come from a line of strong men. My father taught us to stand up strong. Hold your shoulders back. When you speak to another man, hold your head up, look him in the eye. Give him a firm grip. And if he ever caught you not doing that, trust me, it wasn't going to be easy for you. But the enemy came to break me. And I ended up walking around the house, bent over, holding my chest, and having moments of feeling sorry for myself in my yesterday. Looking at my left leg and listening to them talking about amputation and feeling that all was lost in my yesterday. And it wasn't at a crusade meeting. It wasn't an apostle or a bishop that came and laid hands on me. It was my wife caught me coming down the hallway. And she pushed me in the middle of my chest. And she screamed out, stand up! She said, because when I married you, you were not bent over. And we are not going to let this break us. So stand up. This is what I'm saying to somebody today. In your yesterday, don't you let yesterday break you. But somebody shout, stand up. Which leads us, be seated. Which leads us to today. Glory to God. 
They touch somebody and say, future is coming. So, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Psalm 118.24 says, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Has made is a take off of to make, which is the old Hebrew word, asa. Everybody say asa. Say it again, asa. Asa means to take whatever's left and make it new again. This is the power of a living Christ in the God of the Bible. Okay, let me argue it. Let me argue the point. Joel 2.25 says that I will restore to you the years, the locusts, the canker worm, the calipita, the palmer worm, my great army that I sent against you. I will take all of that and make it good. Scientific fact. Insects have one long track that runs through their body, which is their digestive system. And their brain cannot send a signal as to when they have eaten enough. So that they, uh, they just eat and eat and eat. What Joel was saying, after one bug come through, eats and eliminates, the next bug comes, eats what that bug eliminates. All right, that's, that's, that's too much. How about this? How many of us can say sometimes in life it feels like this? If it ain't one thing, it's another. This bug, that bug, that bug, this bug, student loans, bug. Financial disaster, bugs. Loss of jobs, bugs. Health problems, bugs. But God said, I have the power to assault. And whatever the enemy thought had been destroyed. This is just for about a hundred of you right here. God stopped me off in Raleigh just to let you know here at the upper room, God is getting ready to make all of that mess new. If you believe it, give him praise right there. And he's going to do it. Somebody shout today. That's why we cannot dismiss the victories of yesterday. We used to sing a song. One of the stanzas was that each victory will help you some other to win. There's nothing like a good testimony that makes you happy first. You don't need an organist. You don't need nobody to even shout amen. But when your brain starts thinking, come on, talk back to me, somebody. I'm talking about going back to the time where you actually felt like giving up. I know you look deep today and you know you got your stuff on and everybody see you looking all deep and holy but I'm talking about that night that you can oh good God you seriously considered quitting but God stepped in and reminded you that I promise never to leave you or forsake you and when the words of others could not comfort, he came through and his spirit breathed the breath of life again. And then not only resuscitated our spirits, but gave us a visual sign of manifestation. Which leads me to the future. Now... Jeremiah 29 and 11 in the Amplified says, For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster 
to give you a future and a hope. Now here we are talking about the same God who was in our yesterdays. And then the same God that is existing in our todays. Now this same God in our future says, I'm thinking about you. Let me digress right here. For all of us who are married, we remember when we were courting our significant other. And uh, back when I was coming up, it was called Mackin. <laughs> Can you talk it, Reverend? Lori, get on the phone, and my voice goes down. How you doing? What you doing? I ain't doing nothing either. You ain't doing nothing either? But I tell you this, I just been thinking about you. Here is God in his intimate moments. He's saying, I'm thinking about you. So right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast out all spirits of depression. I bind you up in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because it doesn't matter who told you, girl, boy, I ain't thinking about you. You need to take comfort in knowing that God is thinking about me and his thoughts of me have a plan. It is impossible for the God of the Bible to have meandering thoughts, haphazard thoughts. When he's thinking, you need to understand he's putting a plan together. And he gives us indication of the plan. He said, I'm thinking so hard about you, Cleveland. My plan is to prosper you. My plan is to give you a future and a hope. Ah, uh, let me speak right here prophetically. I come against the spirit of hopelessness. I cast it out in the name of the Lord Jesus. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I'm not going to trust no sweeter frame, but I'm going to holistically lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Have I got anybody else in here saying everybody else could walk away, but I'm sticking with God. I'm staying right here because he promised me a future. He promised me greatness. I keep going back to we are less than 48 hours away. I tagged the message and I said, he's in my future. And he can hear me over there. All sound sends a message. Uh, we've, Elder John, we've, my wife and I, we were blessed to raise three. They're all grown. They're all gone. <laughs> I love my sons, but it was time for them to go. Too many men in the house. I miss my daughter. I want her to come home. <laughs> my wife don't. But when we were given order, Go put the dishes up. They didn't have to say anything. But if I heard, oh, so you got an attitude. You gonna slam my dishes. That's what we own today. Go to your room and you hear boom, 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 boom. Oh, you gonna slam my door. 
lot of times, it's not what you say. It's how you say. What your body gives out as sound. I'm trying to come home. You're working me right now. But what if it were possible to speak over into your future? What would you say to God? What if it were possible if he opened up the window of your tomorrow and you saw that you had so much that you didn't have room enough to receive? What would you say today? What if I told you that if he allowed you to peek over into your future and your whole household had gotten saved, what would you say today? What if it were possible that he allowed you to look over into your future that's already prepared for you and said all of my bills are paid and I have more than enough? What would you say? Let me hear you. Really, that's all you got? That's all you got? You mean to tell me that you'll pray the way that you've been praying? You mean to tell me that you'll fast the way that you've been fasting? You mean to tell me that God will put you on lockdown just to work out the kinks in your life for you to get to your future and act like you earned it yourself? But I need about 100 people to be honest with the preacher. So I'm going to lose my mind when my day comes. I'm going to give him the craziest praise that I can muster up when it comes to pass. That's good. But we had a song that we used to go back and sing. Don't wait until the battle is over. Shout now. And I just stopped by to tell somebody, put your dancing shoes on. I just stopped by to tell somebody, get your dance ready. Because it's getting ready to happen. How about this one? It's happening right now. It's just waiting on you to get there. Can I get a witness? Shout glory. Ah! Clap your hands. Open up your mouth. Give him the fruit of your lips. Because what the enemy meant for evil, God is making it good. For when the enemy came in, just like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifted up a standard against him. What's the standard, Cleveland? Thanks for asking. The standard is his name. The standard is his word. The standard is his blood. What you saying, Al? In my future, I got three warring factions waiting to save God. Me and my promise. I got his name. I got his blood. And I got his word waiting on me in my future. I feel like preaching now. Cleveland, it's been hard. You don't understand. I don't want to fall. I've been slipping and sliding. But let me tell you something. Paul told the church that Christ comes to bear all of our burdens. Now, that's too churchy. Let me go to church one more time. Acts 2 says... And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, he said, it sat on them. Now, this is for about 50 people. Where we getting ready to go. Our future is too important to let our flesh get in the way. Our future is too important to let our tongue get in the way. So I need, I need the Holy Ghost to sit on me. Hold me down when my flesh wants to get out of control. Set on me when my tongue wants to be unbridled. Set on me when my way is not pleasing. Set on me because God, he's in my future. 
and he will listen to me. Al, what you gonna say? I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I'm more than a conqueror. I fast more. I seek after righteousness. I seek more. I study more. Because in my future, perfection is calling me. In my future, a higher level and a greater standard. Is anybody in here that Cleveland, you're talking to me? I'm getting ready for my future. Shout glory. Get hey, me right there. Because God knows everything that I need. God, he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. I don't care what you look like right now. You need to understand, in your future, you're shining. In your future, you're sparkling. In your future, you look a whole lot better than you look right now. Anybody ready to talk to your future? Tell your neighbor, future's coming. Tell somebody else, future is coming. And when he comes, he brings fulfillment of every prayer that our parents pray. And when he comes, he brings fulfillment of every line that you stood in for prayer. When he comes, he comes with every prophecy that was spoken in truth over your life. Anybody ready? Aye, aye, aye. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go over in my future. So God, I thank you for everything you've done in my yesterday. I'm much obliged to you for what you did for me today. But I have a hope and a future. And in my future, everything that's been a struggle, tell your neighbor, no more struggle, no more struggle, no more struggle. You need to tell somebody, y'all ain't talking. I did not say you were not gonna have any difficult times, but it won't be a struggle because you found out God is my refuge, a very constant help. Is he for me? Yeah, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I ain't gonna fear, cause God is with me. Say yes, say yes. Ah, yeah, yeah. Come on, clap your hands and give him praise. Come on, clap your hands and give him praise. Come on, clap him faster. Now open up your mouth. Tell God something. Clap your hands. Open up your mouth. Tell God something. Some of y'all won't open your mouth. But this ain't for you. But I'm talking to everybody. That's their 2019. It's gonna be better got to be better for my children got to be better for my grandbabies got to be better for my nieces and nephews got to be better ah, in my future hey, hey. Ah, in my future I can't come off of that one in my future good God Almighty I don't care what kind of money you're making right now see yourself at another financial level not for the glory of man not so people can pat you on your back but you can say I just become I've just been elevated to one of the financiers 
of the kingdom of Christ. Yeah, everybody, everybody, everybody. Come on, tell three people, future is coming. Future is coming. Future is coming. Come on, come on. And if they won't do it, look across the room and just point at somebody and say, future is coming. Future, future, future. So the Lord saw in his divine wisdom to call my mother home to be with the Lord two months ago. Hit me. And I had to preach the message. And the only strength after talking to Dr. Wooden, he said, Cleveland, she got you ready for this. And to know my mother, you will understand why we nicknamed her Jesus' niece. It was just Bible, Bible, Holy Ghost. That's it. All of my life, from the time I was a boy, she told me what God told her about me when I was in her belly. Oh, let's get ready to bless somebody. She had a sermon entitled, Do You Know Who Your Children Are? What did God tell you about them? And we were at the hospice facility I was playing music, I would put her in the wheelchair and take her down to the great room where the grand piano was, and I would sing her favorite songs and play the piano. It ended up, the other nurses started asking if the other patients could come because they heard all of the praise in the room. It would end up being a room full of sick, terminally ill patients. And my sister and I got a little silly one day, Bishop, trying not to cry, so we got silly. Now, my mother had gotten real weak, but the Holy Ghost quickened her. And she slapped me on my hand. She said, stop all that playing, because there are people in here getting ready to go see God. And he got you ready for this day. It gets better. We were in the room. And she couldn't move. And the Lord took me and my sister up into tongues. And we just began to praise and give God glory. Strength out of nowhere set her up in the bed. And her tongue was, she said, don't be tricked. You see what's going on. I'm getting ready to go be with God. I said, mama, you too many things. But the Holy Ghost quickened me as I was beginning to deal with this message even then talking about future. Say, your mama told you about futuristic things, but you were too smart to get it. Just like some of you are too smart to get it. She told me when I was a boy, you are going to preach. Thousands are going to be saved by the word that come out your mouth. I started traveling around the country and I would call her and tell her 15 souls got saved, 50 souls got saved and they brought me in on the plane. Oh, they brought you in on the plane, baby? And then she'll say, only what you do for Christ will last. And she would hang up the phone. She never bragged about the accomplishments. She only bragged about what God said that he was gonna do. And I need to know if I got anybody in here 
that knows that God has said some positive things about you, your children, and your grandbabies. I need to know that I got some believers in here that just became new parents. You need to know that the decision that you're making today to walk with the Holy God will speak to the great, great grandbabies that you may not ever meet, but in your future, Understand this, African Americans have a problem with forethought. We normally only see what's around us, me and mine. God dropped me off at upper room today to ask a question. How many of you believe that not only your sons and daughters are going to do great work in the kingdom, but your grandbabies, and when your grandbabies get grown, and they have children, your great-grandbabies. And when your great-grandbabies get grown, your great-great-grandbabies, the room just got small. I need to know if you're in the room. I need you to praise me for the family that you may never meet, but in your future, God is there. In your future, he's giving you fruit. Come on, I gotta let it go. Clap your hands and give God, give God, give Him your best praise. Hallelujah! 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 Well, I deliver my soul. I've had the habit for the last couple of months now with no prompting, and I don't encourage somebody to go with me. But if you are as happy as I am, that God is getting ready to walk us into something brand new in the next 48 hours, you'll just do this with me and let everybody else catch up. You missed it. See, this is what happens when it gets down in your belly. You don't need nobody to go with you. Baby, you need to understand all the promises that are in front of me are more than all of the baggage that's behind me. I just need to know if I got anybody to meet me on the dance floor because we getting ready to give him a futuristic place. One, two, one, two, three. Put your hands together if you ain't gonna dance. Clap your hands. Clap, clap. Everybody, clap your hands. Praise for your children. Praise for where you're going in God. Go hard, go hard, come on, come on. What did you do when you came out of wilderness do? When you came out the wilderness do? When you came out the wilderness dance, dance, dance. How many people have ever, ever really been sick before? Raise your hand at me. Come on, wave at me, wave at me. Do you remember when you would come to church 
and you would say, Lord, I can't wait till you heal me because I want to praise him with the saints. And all you could do is sit down and cry because the body just wasn't working. I was one of them. Can I get y'all to... They told me in my yesterday that I would be an amputee. But my future said, no, and you won't have a limp either. What did God bring the past for you? Help me praise him. Let's go. Huh? What did you do when you came out the wilderness? You when you came out the wilderness? You when you came out the wilderness? Dance, dance, dance. What did you do when you came out the wilderness? You when you came out the wilderness? You when you came out the wilderness? You're sitting down and say, future is coming. Future is coming. Why are you happy, Cleveland? Because God is in my future. God is in my future. And he can, he can. He can, he can. He can hear me over there now. I feel deliverance on hitting the room. And I know it's Sunday service. And we got the clothes. But the Holy Ghost just spoke. And the Holy Spirit just said, if you will embrace the word, everything that you've been struggling with is getting ready to be over on whoever that's for. Because I got a roll. Do you embrace it, Cleveland? Thanks for asking. Open up your mouth and tell him thank you. Now tell him thank you seven times and keep going. Come on, scream it, scream it.
lady in the black. Tap that lady on her shoulder. Turn around right in front of you, her. Y'all hold hands. You two hold hands. Yes, you and her. Both hands, both hands, both hands. Grab her other hand. Dance. God just said, he just gave you a miracle. Young lady, right in the middle, you, uh-huh. Tap her on her shoulder in front of you. Ask her to turn around. Join hands. Both of y'all dance. God just gave you a mirror. all across the church. Link hands to the person next to you. We gotta go. Come on, all across the aisle. Real quick, quick, quick. All across the aisle. I just saw something. I, I gotta obey God. God said that the enemy is trying to hold some of y'all from the praise that's in your belly. But the Bible says that any two or three of you touch and agree on anything, it shall be done to you. So, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, for the ones who are not strong enough to strike out on their own, I empower them to give you the praise that you're looking for. Because the hand that you're holding, I said the hand that you're holding, is the hand of a miracle. Can you praise him without the music for 30 seconds? Open up your mouth and shout loud. Hallelujah.
Listen. 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 If you just wouldn't indulge me just one time, Bishop. Preacher, touch him. I have watched you, followed you on social media. I see that young Al Cleveland, thirsty for it. Gotta go get it. Everybody in kind. In this, Bishop Wooden is an exception at another level, you know what I'm saying? Lady Pam, y'all, y'all got a bar of excellence that any preacher who's invited, is, yes, I'm coming, I'm coming. But for those of us who seek itinerant ministry, we run into some stuff that'll make us question People don't have a clue that there are times that if we could quit, we would. Flat out. I'm done. But God said for your faithfulness, he's going to take you in 2019 from being overlooked to overbooked. Watch what I say. Be seated. Be seated. Bishop Wooden, over 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago when I met you and our friendship started to form, where's Crystal at? My favorite drummer in the world outside of my son. I told Bishop, he was then just superintendent. I said, Reverend, they're gonna make you a bishop in this church. He looked at me and he said, but that's not what I'm seeking. That's why God is going to do it. I don't wear the tag, the prefix prophet, but every now and then, you know, he uses me. Holy Spirit said in his timing, there is a seat for you on the general board. Watch what I say. Watch what I say, absolutely. All you, I can give the Lord praise. Trajectory is everything. I have watched how you handle your preachers. How you purposefully send them out and not stagnate them. That's major for any African-American Pentecostal church because we are professional dream killers. God has gifted you with a Pauline mandate to perpetuate and spread the gospel. I honor you. Give the Lord praise. <laughs>